In this part of the data structure course related to object classes, we will cover strings and character sequences. Now we are going to cover character sequences. As you may already know, the C++ standard library implements a string class, which is useful to handle and manipulate strings of characters. However, because strings are in fact sequences of characters, we can represent them also as plain arrays of character elements. For example, declare Jenny as an array that can store up to 20 elements of type character. Here, Jenny is declared having 20 elements as a character array. It can be represented as Jenny is the pointer to this array, and here we have 20 entries. Each entry can store a character. In the array Jenny, in theory, we can store sequences of characters up to 20 characters long. But we can also store shorter sequences. For example, Jenny could store at some point in a program either the sequence hello or the sequence how are you. Since both are shorter than 20 characters. Therefore, since the array of characters can store shorter sequences than its total length, a special character is used to signal the end of the valid sequence. It is the null character, whose literal constant can be written as backslash n0. Our array of 20 elements of type character, called Jenny, can be represented storing the character sequences hello and how are you as. In the first case, we have in the first five locations the letters of the hello and just after that we have the null character. In the second case, we have the letters of the sentence how are you and then null character. Notice how after the valid content a null character 0 has been included in order to indicate the end of the sequence. The panels in grey color represent character elements with undetermined values. Now we are going to consider initialization of null terminated character sequences. Because arrays of characters are ordinary arrays, they follow all their same rules. For example, if we want to initialize an array of characters with some predetermined sequence of characters, we can do it just like any other array. Here we have my word, which is an array of characters. Then it is initialized to H-E-L-L-O and then a null character. This is an array and for each entry, the value is specified. In this case, we would have declared an array of six elements of type character initialized with the characters that form the word hello plus a null character backslash zero at the end. But arrays of character elements have an additional method to initialize their values using string literals. Double quoted strings are literal constants whose type is, in fact, a null terminated array of characters. So string literals enclosed between double quotes always have a null character automatically appended at the end. Therefore, we can initialize the array of character elements called my word with a null terminated sequence of characters by either one of these two methods. We can initialize it either by writing my word character array and the letters of the hello and null character, or we can write directly character my word array as the word hello with a double quotation. 
In both cases, the array of characters my word is declared with a size of six elements of type character. The five characters that compose the word hello plus a final null character, which is backslash zero. This specifies the end of the sequence and that in the second case, when using double quotes, it is appended automatically. Notice that we are talking about initializing an array of characters in the moment it is being declared and not about assigning values to them once they have already been declared. In fact, because this type of non-terminated arrays of characters are regular arrays, we have the same restrictions that we have with any other array. So we are not able to copy blocks of data with an assignment operation. Assuming my text is a character array variable declared previously, assignment operations within a source code like my text assigned string hello or my text array assigned string hello would not be valid, like neither would be my text then assignment the letters of the word hello and null character. The reason for this may become more comprehensible once you know a bit more about pointers. Since then, it will be clarified that an array is in fact a constant pointer pointing to a block of memory using null terminated sequences of characters. Null terminated sequences of characters are the natural way of treating strings in C++. So they can be used as such in many procedures. In fact, regular string literals have this type character array and can also be used in most cases. For example, C in and C out support now terminated sequences as valid containers for sequences of characters. So they can be used directly to extract strings of characters from C in or to insert them into C out. For example, here we are considering character arrays. Before that, there is an include statement for the input output operations, include IO string from the library. This is the main part between these curly parentheses. Character question array is declared here and it is initialized to please enter your first name and a column here. The second array greeting, again character array, initialized to hello and the third one character your name and this one is not initialized but it is declared that it has size 80. Here there is a C out statement so on the output device the content of the question will be displayed which is please enter your first name. And then there is an input statement. It is requiring the user to enter the value for your name. And then we have again output statement. Greetings, the content of the greetings is outputted. And then the content of your name is outputted. And then we have this symbol. If this is executed, in a sample run, we will see, please enter your first name because of this output statement. And then user enters John, and John is loaded to the variable your name. And then in the next line, the content of the greeting, which is hello, 
hello, and then your name, which is John, is entered here. Hello, John. As you can see, we have declared three arrays of character elements. The first two were initialized with string literal constants, while the third one was left uninitialized. In any case, we have to specify the size of the array. In the first two, question and greeting, the size was implicitly defined by the length of the literal constant they were initialized to. While your name, we have explicitly specified that it has a size of 80 characters. Finally, sequences of characters stored in character arrays can easily be converted into string objects just by using a signed operator. Here, my string is declared as a string object, and the size of string objects are 32 bytes in most of the systems. Then here, my array is declared as a character array. It is initialized with the string some text. Then my string is assigned value with the string stored in the my array.